Okay, now let's see what we can draw from this so far. Our chance experiments have had a finite number of possibilities, albeit possibly a very large number, that we're going to sample from these possibilities randomly, meaning uniformly with equal chance for every possibility. Outcomes then are one of these possibilities. Events are aggregates of outcomes, and attached to every event is a chance or a number, a probability measure. The two examples I've given you have been particularly susceptible of a ball and earn modeling mindset. We can now use this and use this kind of modeling framework in a variety of combinatorial settings where we have random sampling. So, let me start by giving you a more abstract version, but a simple abstract version of this problem for you to muse on. Suppose one has two balls, call them say A and B, and one places them randomly in three urns, call them one, two, and three. What are the chances that the middle urn, the central urn, is occupied? Pause the lecture and say if you can build up to an answer. Okay, now that you're back, let's see how you did. So, this is the setting. It's a generic ball and urn problem, and in this case, of course, there is no verbal camouflage around the balls and the urns. Right? We're not talking of dice or people or birthdays or the faces of the die. No, I just said we've already modeled it and now we have two balls. They could, for example, be two dice or two anything whatsoever, two people. Now, you're going to place the balls in three urns and now we need a model for it, a clean mathematical way of viewing the experiment. Now, if you've done what is depicted on the right of your screen, then that will be completely consonant with the kind of terminology and notation, the way we viewed our first two experiments. So, for example, we could say, well, there are three urns, let's call them one, two, and three, and let's then give an ordered pair of values. The first value tells you where the first ball went, which urn it was placed in. The second value tells you where the second ball goes. So now we have an ordered pair where sampling is with replacement from three urns, and therefore you have three to the power two, or nine possibilities for the pair of balls. Now, in this setting, you can say, well, are there other ways of viewing the problem? And of course, we could view it much more graphically. And this is illustrated on the left. For example, so you have balls A and B. Physically show the urns at locations here, here, and here. One, two, and three. And simply place the balls in these locations in various orders. Now, one should, of course, do this systematically, lexicographically. So one could, for instance, first identify all possibilities where both balls go into a common urn. Both go into the first urn, both go into the second urn, both go to the third urn. And then identify systematically possibilities where you have each ball in a distinct urn. And you could do this, for example, by first identifying all the cases where the first urn is occupied. So either the first ball goes in there, A goes in there, and then B goes in one of the remaining two places, or B goes in the first urn, and then A goes in one of the two remaining places. This eliminates all possibilities where the first urn is occupied. Now eliminate possibilities where the first urn is unoccupied and the second urn is occupied, which means either A is in the second urn or B is in the second urn, which means the remaining ball must be in the third urn, and we've got all the possibilities, and again there are nine. All roads do lead to Rome. There are many notations one could adopt, which could describe the underlying problem. Of course, it is important to pick a notation which is compact, which is not overly cumbrous and complex. In our case, either of these two would serve. What is the event of interest to us? Well, the abstract event, shown of any particular color, is simply that the second urn is occupied. If you picked a numerical pairwise representation of the outcomes, this means that you've got a pair of numbers where one or both of the pair takes the value 2. And you identify there are five possibilities and you write them down. If you 
take the more visual notation on the left, then we simply identify urns where the middle urn is not empty. And again, there are five possibilities. All roads do, in fact, lead to Rome. We assume that we have random selection, so all outcomes are equally likely, and therefore the chance that the second urn is occupied is exactly five in nine.